Cheers, guys. Epics 911, welcome to the Elitist Geek, another VR news episode for June 30th. Quick update on the personal front. Where to start with this? Okay, you guys know the debacle of the last almost two weeks now, I guess week and a half, with my Vive HMD. Those of you who've been following it know that the escalation department on Friday couriered a new HMD out to me, which arrived Monday. It worked. It worked fine. But guess what? <laughs> this, I swear, only happens to me, it seems like, a dead pixel. And I know there's different tolerances for dead pixels. Some of you guys don't care about dead pixels. Others have a super high tolerance for them uh, and really only care if there's like a huge cluster in the center. But me and kind of my semi-OCD, even just one dead pixel, which this is, it's not a stuck pixel, it's a dead one, it's a black pixel, pretty much dead center my right eye on that screen. So the, the right eye, the screen behind that lens has that dead pixel. And I'm the kind of guy, once I notice it, I can't stop staring at it. Um, I will just be drawn to it. During a movie, I'll just keep looking at it. During a game, I'll just keep looking at it. I finished recording the Elite Dangerous Part 2 for you guys. I spent half the game looking at the damn dead pixel. So, um, I called back, or rather emailed back to the Escalation Department, the uh, gal that I was dealing with, and mentioned it to her. I don't know what they're going to do. Obviously, I would want one that doesn't do it, considering there was nothing wrong with my old one. It worked perfectly fine until it stopped working perfectly fine. But there were no dead pixels. It was perfect. Now I got a working one, and I got a dead pixel. We'll see, because a lot of TV companies are really anal with that stuff. It has to be a certain number of pixels, certain quadrants, all that kind of crap. But like I said, it's only one, but it is dead center, and it's, I know it's going to drive me nuts. So we'll see what they say. I'll update you guys, but um, that's the situation. The other good news, so even, well, that's not good news, but the other news, which is good news, <laughs> is my Rift finally has a tracking number. So uh, received an email today with the tracking number. So I am expecting my Rift, Oculus Rift, to arrive early next week. So I will be, like I said, starting to do content for my Rift alongside. And there's things that I just want to see. Like I want to compare with my own eyes the difference between Elite Dangerous on those. My understanding is that the main difference was text clarity on the Vive because of the way the field of view works. Now with that super sampling trick, personally, I don't notice that blurriness anymore. Like it was night and day for me. Heard back from quite a few of you guys, night and day as well for you guys. How does that stack up against the Rift? I don't know, we'll find out. So there's an Elite Dangerous video coming up and then the video after that is gonna deal with Revive. So I'm gonna look at a bunch of Oculus Rift games play them on the Vive via Revive and see how I make out because there's supposed to be 35 games uh, with pretty much working compatibility. Upload VR, uh, talking about dead pixels, just uploaded an article dealing with HTC starting to sell parts. Now, apparently this was a leaked document and uh, not many of you guys probably follow hockey. You know, being Canadian, of course, the stereotype, I follow hockey. But the Tampa Bay Lightning apparently had their draft cheat notes. Somebody left behind in a, by a urinal in a bathroom or something. So similar to that, uh, apparently HTC leaked accidentally the parts that they have up for sale. Now, as to be expected, the HMD is not one of those parts because... Well, that's essentially the unit, right? So like with me, it's easier for them to just replace it RMA or buy a new one rather than buy it as a part, right? But some examples of prices, and I didn't think they were too bad. There's a couple that were probably priced a little bit too high, but for the most part, I thought it was fair. So I'm really curious what you guys think. Uh, base, for example, the base station, 135 US. 
the controller with the AC adapter, 130. I thought that one was a little high. The base station, 135. If you think about it, that's like 15%. That's not too bad. The controller, 130 bucks for one. Personally, I think that should buy you two, like 65 each. I think that would be fair. Uh, control box, so no AC for it, just the control box itself, 30 bucks. Again, I think that's fair. Uh, USB cable for two or 10 bucks, set of face, face cushions. Now, I still re recommend that Cover VR as a better alternative, like the aftermarket ones, if you're going to get extra. But if you did just want to get that same kind of foamy replacement, which I don't think works well with sweat, right? Uh, it's 25 for a pair of two. So two narrow, 25, two wide, 25. Don't know if you can mix and match, like one narrow, one wide, right? Don't know. And then nose rests, 13 bucks each for narrow, 13 for wide. Again, I find that fair, right? The Verge has an article regarding Google and their uh, virtual reality version of Chrome for Android devices. Now, the whole point of this is this is basically R&D for Daydream, which is the Google Cardboard successor. And it's going to be primarily for websites. Now, that sounds great, because, but there's a caveat to that. And, and first, why it sounds great is the problem with online shopping is it's online shopping. You can't touch something, right? You can't feel it. You don't get a tactile response, right? You can't drink it. You're limited strictly to a static picture. What you can do now with this 360, you still can't touch it, but you can see it relative to other objects, so you get an idea of the size and the scale, right? A little bit more, especially if they make you like if your image is relative to the scale, you know what I mean? So for example, if you're buying a couch from Ikea, you could see what that couch essentially looks like assembled. That's a good aspect. Um, so size wise, how much space it occupies, uh, those are all kind of benefits. But for the most part, I don't know how much of a difference it's going to make unless I'm missing something, but uh, still kind of a cool concept. We'll see how that, uh, how that goes. But um, I think that's kind of kind of be the way that they're going to go anyways. It's still better than a static image, but it doesn't beat seeing it in person, right? So the other issue, actually, I just remembered now is I hope it doesn't have that fish lens vision. Now, I have it on good authority, not necessarily me, but good authority that a lot of what they call VR porn is basically just horrible, terrible 360 degree camera work. And a lot of it has that fish lens, the fish eye lens effect. For anybody who doesn't know, that's kind of, you know, when you're looking through a peephole <laughs> and you kind of get that big face, that's kind of what that looks like. So hopefully it doesn't look like that on their websites. And I would assume they're not going to make it look like that. But why the, a lot of the porn went that way first instead of just quality actual VR video, I don't know. Compatibility? Who knows? Anyways, and then the last thing I wanted to talk about is I talked about the graphic card, the RX 480 yesterday. Intel has a new chip coming out. And I've had a lot of you ask me about CPUs versus GPUs for virtual reality. And here's the breakdown. So, unlike, say, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, Games back then were still very much CPU challenged. Of course, they benefited from graphic cards, but they also benefited from CPUs, very much so. You could have like a Pentium 75 versus a Pentium 120, and it was huge. You almost had the difference in megahertz reflected the difference in performance. Like it was, it was huge. The last five years, I would say, probably since the Sandy Bridge, actually really since they've gone to the i3, i5, i7 kind of lineup, right, from the core two duos, that hasn't been near as important. Games predominantly are GPU challenged. My system's a perfect illustration of that. My system 
has a 1080, but it runs Sandy Bridge, which is a 2011 CPU and motherboard, right? It's a 4.2 gigahertz i5. I've got 16 gigs of RAM and I'm running one card. The only area that a faster, newer CPU would really help me in is if I was to go SLI or Crossfire. Like if I had multiple GPU cards, definitely I would start to be CPU challenged because you just don't have enough cores to push all those graphics, right? But if all you're buying is a single graphic card and you're doing an upgrade, you can comfortably go to something like a 1080. You'll get essentially the exact same benchmarks. In fact, you'll notice when tech sites do benchmarks of games on newer processors, they do those games in low resolution. They don't do them with all the options cranked. And they do that because that's the only way to see a difference between the CPUs. If you run that with all the eye candy turned on, da 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 da, you're gonna see benchmarks like my Sandy Bridge compared to Skylake, like the newest one, single digit percentages, if even on some games. I've checked multiple benchmarks and if Skylake gets 115 frames per second, I might get 113, like it's that close. It's not a huge thing. And case in point, they took this newest CPU, which is the LGA 2011. It's a i7-6950, ran it stock and then ran it overclocked. So stock is three gigahertz, keep that in mind. Overclocked is 4.3, all right? They looked at a couple of games. The Division is one game they looked at. So stock, it ran 95.3 frames per second. Overclocked, 95.8 which is literally 0.5, half a frame difference, which is much less than 1%. If you convert it to percentages, it's way under 1%. That, you know, if that's the kind of performance, I mean, that is the kind of performance that you're looking at. The upgrades I would do to make your station VR ready is GPU, GPU, GPU. As long as you have an i5, of any of the last few generations, concentrate on the video card. Unless, of course, like I say, you wanna do Crossfire, SLI, which currently isn't being used that, you know, for VR much, in fact, penalizes it in a lot of cases. Eventually, they're gonna have that working and stereo rendering, it's gonna benefit you more. But for now, take that money, buy a better video card. So, example, say you have $800 budget to do an upgrade. Rather than spending 300 on a video card and then 500 for a CPU, motherboard, and RAM, my advice would be spend all the 800 on a video card because you're going to get the easily the best bang for the buck. Like, no comparison. And just one more game to, to reflect, GTA 5. 111 frames stock, 112.5. Uh, there were a couple of games that went high. The highest was, like, still just about 10%. So... Less than 1% to just under 10% is not an incentive. When you're talking about going from like a 960 to a 1080, you're talking high double digit percentage speed increase. So there you have it. So just uh, keep that in mind. If you're doing an upgrade, GPU should always be your first priority to get that VR performance. All right, as always guys, till the next video, cheers.